All right. Hello, everybody. This is Leo Brady with TheMovieGuy.com. I am here with the fantastic team for their new film, Monolith. We have Matt Vesley, we have Lily Sullivan, and we have Lucy Campbell, the writer. This is such a excellent movie. It is tense. It is eerie. I, I don't even know where to begin because it's kind of like still got me on edge. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll start, start with you, Matt. I mean... You get this screenplay from Lucy, and you're saying to yourselves, "Okay, this is like a lot of audio. This is a this is a movie with like yeah. podcasting and things of that nature." So, how do you uh, say? To your, how do you start to like put that into a movie? How do you say like start to create and see it in your mind of what Monolith is going to look like? Well, the film was developed in a, like a lab process back home in Australia that was designed to to make low budget features that we developed the film together along with our producer, Bettina Hamilton. So the idea was that we'd go into this lab knowing what our rough budget would be coming out, you know, it's a small budget film, and design something that was from the ground up that we're not trying to squeeze a film into a small budget, we're trying to build something that's kind of like more interesting because of it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, you say it's like this thing of like, how am I gonna make this work? But actually it's, it was all, that was the, the germ of the idea was that it's gonna be this one woman podcasting in her house right. and can you do an alien invasion story um, just through that audio so it means that every choice that you're making is just trying to make that work and so that narrowing that creative focus down is kind of um, freeing in a way because you just it's just every choice that you're making with the art team or the uh, cinematographer um, or the editor they're all choices about trying to find a way to make that um, that play. Yeah. Um, what was I think most important was if you see a film like The Guilty or Lock, which are these great films that do a similar thing, where it's like one actor talking to people on the phone. Yeah. They have stories that are happening in real time. And, and The Guilty, it's you know, it's a nine one one call that is like someone being kidnapped. Right. Our story, uh, Lily's character, is interviewing people about things that have happened to them in their past. So it, and so you don't have that immediate tension. And so the important thing to us was to find some ways to evolve the visuals throughout the film. And so Michael, the cinematographer, and I, um, we had like a chapter document and broke the film into sequences. And it was like, okay, in this first chapter, we can't see Lily's face. And in the second chapter, the camera doesn't move. And in the third chapter, we leave the room and go into another room. You know, rules like this, that just mean that it's constantly evolving. You don't feel stuck. And I think one of the things I'm proud of about the film is actually, I think after a while, you kind of forget that it's one actor in one place it sort of goes away yeah and i think that's because of that rigor that mike and i had of like finding those changes and also the rigor that lucy had as a writer to make sure and we talked about this a lot that each yeah. scene in each sequence has really clear turns and escalations yeah, yeah absolutely i mean the, this the script was like it's obviously a one person one location film which is a really hard film to you know conceptualize and want to make sure that it's not too boring or it's a lot of restrictions on you as a, it's a lot of restrictions but, but yeah, i think um definitely. we were always looking at okay what's every scene doing and what's every turn and making sure that we were really aware that every scene had to kind of push along this film so that you don't feel like you're just sort of like meandering too much in, mm -hmm. in a you know like sort of in a mire of, <laughs> of a moment or anything like that so it was just like a super important part of it yeah yeah they're long conversations but i think the film moves quickly and i think Yes. Yes, it, it very much does. I mean, and for Lily, obviously, you know, uh, I think you're one of the few actors here that has more than one movie at South by Southwest, yeah. which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, we'll talk about that yeah. maybe. Uh, but we, but Monolith is like it's just you. I mean, that's a daunting task. Can you sort of talk about for you acting wise the process that you had to sort of take to become the character prepare for you know delivering all these lines i mean that, that seems pretty daunting to be alone in a room and mm -hmm. just with yourself totally there was no turning around with another actor yeah. like cool i've been turning around on <laughs> 12 hours a day being filmed covering like 18 pages of dialogue and for me it was like approaching it more like um theater in a way that i felt like i had to learn the script front to back um, and then coming off of Evil Dead, um, which was fully in the physical, uh, this was like almost a palate cleanser, I feel like acting wise, to just fully go internal. And when you remove a, the visual of another human being in front of you, it's so crazy how deep you go into your imagination and also 
I don't know, get locked away in that little echo chamber within which kind of we shot in chronological order. Okay. So as the descent happens into the, you know, the infiltration of whatever. Right, right. Um, it, it was, it felt like an experiment. I felt like I was on an experiment. And also we shot and we were in the, um, outside of Adelaide in the hills and shooting in the one location, it felt like the house was almost my, um, yeah. My uh, what do you call it? Other le other leading role, basically. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, another it's another character. That we're right, right. Like yeah, like, like a cocoon, Ooh. sort of like you're just hiding out in your like little layer. Yeah, yeah. For sure. And uh, that's what we did in the prep. We didn't we didn't rehearse because there's so much dialogue. You just kill it with rehearsal. So definitely. <laughs> all we did we did one read through together, just chatted about it, and then just went up to the house and let you. We did that. We did an exercise where I let Lily like come into the room and just own the space in mm. silence with just me and her in the room for like half an hour yeah just so you could feel that like feel like oh this is where i belong how quiet when you have, when you remove the crew when you're actually like yeah. this person is feel here alone. feel completely isolated yeah. and alone yeah yeah well i mean obviously it's probably a simple answer because we see the talent up on the screen but choosing lily to sort of be this character was there a process for that to put you on the spot while she's standing right yeah. next to you. I mean, was there a process for that? And like, what sort of convinced you and said, all right, well, this is clearly a talent that can handle this. Well, it was Lily's agent actually, with, who mm -hmm. not, Bettina, our producer knows well, who said, hey, I've, you know, she read the script and said, hey, I've got someone I think would be really good for this. You gotta check her out. Yeah. And sent through Lily's reel. And I realized that I'd seen her in a bunch of stuff. There's right. a, a show called The Other Guy Back Home, which I'd seen her in and I remember being like, oh, I was like, oh, that's her. She was my favorite part of that show, <laughs> which is a comedy. It's like such a different thing, but, um, uh, and I went back and watched Galore, which is a film you did when you were very mm. young. I was like, oh, yeah. I don't know, she's like 17 and this is weird. Yeah, yeah. but, um, <laughs> but there was actually no concern about Lily's talent. We were no, like, I didn't even do a tape. No, we didn't audition Lily at all. We just yeah. had a chemistry vibe. That's it. Out. So Bettina and producer and I just had a Zoom with uh, Lil, because we're in different states back home in Australia. Yep. And literally all we wanted to see was whether she was going to be up for like this smaller film and being like owning the role and being one of us. like. The whole crew, we really tried to make it feel like it was our film. Everyone yeah. buying in, yeah. and that's all we wanted to suss whether Lou would be up for it. And and we knew, like in like five minutes of the conversation, she was. You could <laughs> tell she was genuinely interested in the, the challenge of it, and that she was cool and fine and down to earth. And those are the things that were. Like, it's just we could not have someone on set who was like not going to engage with us or like right. was off in their trailer or like you know which you know. Hopefully most actors aren't, but right. if it was going to be someone like that, like a diva or something, it was just never going to work. So mm. we just wanted chemistry. That's all we wanted because we knew she was a fantastic actor. Her work speaks for itself. Um, she also has an amazing voice, and that was part of it. We I like, was going to ask. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were like, wow, that's a really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a cool podcast voice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll be waiting for the. We're waiting for the Lily Sullivan podcast. Yes. Is basically what we're saying. We should do this spin off. Yeah, seriously. Well, so, and, and Lucy, for you, too, I mean, like, coming up with this idea for this screenplay, I mean, where where did this really originate? And, like, have you listened to, like, true crime podcasts and you were just like, I I Got think I, yeah, what, well, I think I have something here. I think, well, I think, actually, we, so the, the way, like Matt was saying before, the way that we came up with the idea was the three of us, Matt, Bettina, and myself, uh, really collaborated on the idea right from the beginning. Yeah. And we knew it was going to be a podcast. Bettina's a very into podcasts. I don't listen to as many podcasts as I, I should. <laughs> I did listen to quite a lot to get get into this, and we, we researched and interviewed a podcaster as well to sort of understand um, the trials and tribulations. But um, yeah, it's uh, I think we have always kind of knew what this film was about. Yeah, um, we knew it right from the beginning. I, like once I sort of beat it out the story, and having the director on really early as part of the development is quite unusual but actually like just amazing like and yeah. working with Matt and Bettina in the cre creatively from development has been incredible and we've all really owned the story um, it's a story that we all feel quite passionate about we love sci-fi mm. we're right. massive nerds like you know <laughs> and like that's all really a, a big part of this is a film that we would want to watch which I think is like a really massive Important. I made it in three weeks. And we made it in three weeks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We wanted to like, can you make an X Files episode when we don't really have many resources? Well, actually, you, <laughs> you were bigger than that. You, I remember you saying, can we make a rival yeah. without any money, without yeah. ever leaving the room? Right. That was, yeah. that was what we, because those sorts of films with, I guess, big concepts, mm. but with a small budget, um, was sort of like what really inspired us, I think. Yeah. 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 Uh, for. 
setting up the mood of like the, of the sets. I mean, is that just for for you, Lily? Do you like put a head your headphones in and just sit by yourself for a little bit, and maybe it's listening to some eerie music? I mean, like I said, there's really an eerie tone about this. It's dark. You kind of like freak people out in a lot of ways um and uh do you have to psych yourself out in a little bit to like get ready for something like this yeah i mean i feel like again coming from evil dead to this, it was like it was still though energetically like the body goes into fight or flight and you kind of for me this was much more of a dance of the mind as opposed to the dance of the body um, but yeah, I mean, for sure, it's, there'll be moments on set where you would clear the set and I would just sit there again to feel the silence, to feel what this, this, this sense of isolation and sense of being alone. Um, and yeah, to do some of the things that I do in this movie, it was, <laughs> you pull from weird places, but also <laughs> like, it kind of is almost like energetic dancing. Like you can kind of like force your body into these like, physiological like weird I don't know you're a very physical actor it's super interesting even mm. when it's like a, just a conversation Lily would do things like okay I'm gonna do 30 push-ups before that's while you're getting set up before, and then then we'll roll right I feel like it's just to feel alive really a little bit. yeah it's like even I, I don't know because it's like when you have a camera on your face for 12 hours a day and you're you know shooting pages and pages and pages of dialogue it's like to carbonate energy and feeling that then feels interesting to watch when it's only you on screen yeah. it's like sometimes i find that just a cheat in as opposed to lose too much to intellectualizing um mm. acting it's yeah. just like all about creating that buzz behind the eyes yeah, yeah. you're yeah, incredible at that it was interesting to watch. and it took us a while to kind of find it. i remember it took mm. a few days and then we settled into this rhythm of like totally. let lily own the set so once we're kind of ready, we're all set up, then it's like the first AD will be like, okay, everyone's set, great. Lily, the set is yours. And just let Lily have as long as she wants to feel alone, to feel... And it's so behavioral. That's what yeah. I think also overwhelmed me with being shot all day, every day. <laughs> yeah. And then also just like, it's just full activity. Like it's full behavior. And like to, to kind of replicate that. Humans, I think what I feel like as cinema goes, you can just smell when someone doesn't feel comfortable in a space or they're picking up a pen, yeah. they pre-planned it. It's like to find all of that and let go of that analytical mind yeah. that you're like, bullshit, what are you right. doing? Like, <laughs> right. You know, all of a sudden, yes. like, we were talking about what do I do with my hand? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. You don't want it to look calculated. You yeah, want it to look it. authentic, <laughs> right? Really yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, like, I remember hearing you talked about Locke. I mean, I remember hearing Steve, Stephen Knight talk about how he would have Tom Hardy in the car, and then he had his his the rest of his cast at an entirely separate like hotel talking on phones. Can you give us a little bit of a background on to how you guys set up the dialogue of conversations on the on the telephone calls? We wanted a, a pretty high caliber of cast of, of the Australian actors that we have, and maybe some of them not as known here, but they're really like great um, actors back home. I mean, the film opened with Damon Harriman who played you know he's played Charles Manson in mm. both, both Once Upon a Time Hollywood and Mind Manhunt, Hunter. Mindhunter right yeah. right you know so we've got these fantastic actors because of the nature of our small film you know punching above its weight we couldn't have them on set yeah. but it was also really important I've done films I've done a film with a robot that spoke was a pre-record yeah. and that's no, it just can't work for an actor it just doesn't know yeah, right. it could be pre-recorded yeah. Yeah. so we worked with another actor and writer called Ansuya Nathan who's still in the film she plays Paula mm -hmm. um but she on set was live doing all the voices live with Lily wow. and literally Same piped idea. into her headphones. So that that's all set up with the sound team. She's literally listening to her phone on a phone call through the headphones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So doing that stuff live in that way that Locke would do it, but um, just with one actor because that's kind of how he set it up. And then the other actors had to all jump in and then work to my pace and my rhythm. Basically, we sort of like crazy. Cut the, during post, we would gradually do ADR sessions with these great actors and, and fill them in. And yeah. Azu's performance was fantastic, but mm. she's not like an elderly German man. Or <laughs> 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 um, no, she did kind of convince me for a <laughs> We got used to it sometimes. Yeah, so I'm like, so oh, she's pretty good. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, but she, but yeah, so we kept her in the film because she plays a very important scene towards the end of the film. But um, that worked, I think that worked really well. And, and it meant that like, because Ansu is there the whole time with you know that all three weeks with Lil, you could have fine time to just go off with her, work on stuff. Mm. And and because we're not going to use Ansu's final performance, we can get Ansu to do things that are just there to like get a reaction out mm. of Lily or totally. like, really yell at her this time, even if that's maybe not totally how we I'm want. Like I feel nothing. I can't. I don't know, I've had this conversation. Yeah, yeah. even if we're not necessarily, that's not what the final performance is going to be. But it's this interesting trick we could play to just mm. because on set or and a great freeing as a director, simplifying things. The only thing that really matters. Matters on set is Lily, 
And so I could trust Anso that she's going to deliver enough to give Lily what she needs. Yeah. And then, you know, in post, figure out those voices later. Yeah. And every time we put one in in post, it's like the scene like jumped another level. Elevated. It was really exciting. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, yeah. That, that's got to be like really fulfilling too. It's when cool. it, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, last question obviously is going to be for the star. So I mean, yes, Evil Dead and Monolith. Now, I mean, and we want to like talk up Monolith because this is literally yeah. like your show. And I know, like, um, I know Evil Dead maybe had had the bigger budget, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe, yeah. yeah. But for you, I mean, now it, that makes it sort of like two science fiction horror movies in a row i know you've been on some tv shows that are a little bit thriller oriented uh what do you sort of chalk up to being sort of getting attention for horror films or genre films themselves is that sort of a type of style of film that you just really gravitate to and you love to make (laughs) i'm like getting out getting to live out ridiculous old realities like i don't want to be someone's pretty girlfriend or in a corset <laughs> yeah. downtown Abbey like I'm like cover me in blood give me a chainsaw make, I won't say what the thing is so right. I'll spoil monolith you right. see it <laughs> um, but like to act out the most absurd and do things that I think I would hopefully never do in real life yeah. mm-hmm. um, I love it yeah. I love it it's good we are so excited to see we're going to see Evil Dead mm-hmm. on Wednesday night here at South By and we're very very excited it looks amazing it's, it's great to have these two and to have Monolith it was like yeah it's, it's a perfect little platform right now I'm super happy yeah. All right. Well, this is fantastic. Yay. Matt Vesley, uh, uh, Lily, Lily Sullivan. Sullivan, Lucy <laughs> Campbell. Sorry, a lot of L's, yeah. right? <laughs> well, uh, thank you both. Uh, thank you all three of you for being with me today. This has been great. Uh, hopefully, everybody, everybody better go out and see Monolith. Congratulations. Thanks for your time. Thanks so much.